I'm going to show how to create a new push notification app on Parse and then build the client side mobile application using Object Pascal and C. So I'm here in my Parse account and I can create a new app. So let's click the button here, create new app. We need to give it an app name. So I'll call this my David I push test one app and it gives me uh, getting started my push test app has been successfully created and it gives me a bunch of keys let's select the data browser page and we'll go to settings and select push notifications and here we'll set up for a push notification uh, we need to provide a Apple push certificate it says here this is only necessary if you plan on pushing to iOS devices. So we need a certificate file, a .p12, for the app. So we'll go to Keychain Access. We'll go to the certificate that I have for my iOS push services, that push app one. We'll right mouse click and choose Export Apple Development Push Access. And we want that personal information exchange P12 extension. Let's give it a name. And this is just my uh, certificates dot David I parse push uh, test one. I think it was called. I was calling it just a name. It's asking for a password, but parse doesn't support password protected. So we'll just say, OK. I need to specify my system administrator password, and then I can go back to the the parse site. We'll turn we'll turn on client push enabled. We'll go and select the certificate file. There's the P12. Say OK. And now for that app ID, I've got the push certificate. Now let's go and create a sample app. So we'll start by saying File New, FireMonkey Mobile Application. We'll just choose a blank application. Over in the component palette, we've got our BAAS, or Backend as a Service set of components, a parse provider, a convey provider, and some other components, for example, the push components. Let's start by putting a parse provider down. And over in the object inspector, we'll need to set the application ID, the master key, and the rest API key. So we'll put in the application ID, copy the master key, paste that in. And then the rest API key. We'll drop down a push event component. And we'll link that to the parse provider here in the object inspector. And then we'll put a memo on the user interface. And the memo we'll just use for containing some of the information about what's happening as far as push is concerned. We'll put a toolbar at the top and put a label inside of it. Set that to the contents. Take the label and, and line the text to the center. Then we'll align the memo to the rest of the client area. Now we need to hook some events associated with push events. So first one is device registered. So we'll just put out a string in the memo push event one device registered. And then for the token received event handler, we'll just put the string token received. So we can, again, this is just to know what's happening under the covers as we get push notification. 
there's an event for request token failed, uh, token request failed, and then finally the push event received. We'll put out a string which is the push received. And notice the parameter we're going to get is going to be whatever data comes from the the push server from parse. So we'll add to the memo another line. And we'll just say the data dot message, which is a string. And we'll put a blank line. Go to Project Options, Entitlement List, and with an iOS device, Platform Target, we'll turn on Receive Push Notification in iOS. And then Project Options Version Info, the CF Bundle Identifier, to that same name that we chose over in our app ID at Apple site, which was com.davidi.pushapp1. We'll click the OK. So the user interface is done for my mobile app uh, push notification test. There's just one more thing I need to do. Over in the doc wiki under iOS settings, it's reminding me that the REST API for convey and parse are accessed through secure HTTP or HTTPS, my app's going to need open SSL support. And on platforms that don't include the library, such as iOS, we can download them. And the link here is a download to in Project Indie uh, SSL subdirectory. So we go over here, and here's a bunch of the different open SSLs for Windows. There's a .7z file for static libraries for iOS. I've downloaded that zip file. And here are the libssl and libcrypto.a file, the static libraries. The other thing the DocWiki says is that these two files need to be in the linker library path, or you can put them in the project directory. I've copied those two files into my project directory so that the linker will find them. So now we're ready in the ID to build and deploy our application. So we'll make sure everything is saved. We'll click the Run button. There's the app icon appearing. Here's the splash screen. Here's the interface. The first thing you'll see is that since the app is set to get push notifications, I need to allow these notifications to take place. So we'll click OK. So now I need to go back to my parse site. Here's my application. And let's go and send a push. That's my iOS client. And we'll just type hello from parse. And we can either set it at a specific schedule, at a certain time. We can set its expiration. And let's just do it now, send notification. And over here in my iOS application, I've got the push received and hello from parse. So let's go back and do the same thing in C++. Let's add a new project, C++ FireMonkey mobile application. We'll choose the blank application. We can take the same components and paste them into our application. I'm using the same key and the same push events. We need to make those C++ event handlers. I'll uh, add a toolbar, Okay, put the memo down, and align that to the rest of the client area. And then the push events will do the device registered. For device register, we'll just put out a string that says push events device registered. Hook the token registered. So this is device token registered, device request. And there's an optional string for the error message as well, if we want to use that. Push 
received. And memo one, and we'll take the data. I'll put the message. Make sure that I have the two static libraries in my same folder as my project. So the last two things to do in our project is make sure that we have the right project options set for iOS. First is under entitlements list, make sure that receive push notifications in iOS is set to true. And under the version information, make sure that the CF bundle identifier is my Apple ID, which is that com.davidi push app one. We'll save everything and then we'll do a run. Here's the splash screen. And there's my C++. So the device token was received, the device re was registered. We can go and send a push. And let's, uh, hello, C++ builder from parse. Send it now. And here's the event happening over. Push event, push received. Hello, C++ Builder from Parse. So one last thing I want to show you on the push notifications, in this case for iOS and using Parse, is I showed you what happens when you have the app running, then the push notification just shows up in your app. If your app is in the background and it receives a notification, then it you click on the notification and it comes to the foreground and it shows you the notification that you got. The third way is if your application is not running and how do you get that notification alert or message. And to do that, we go to the form. We go to the form and we hook the on activate event for the form. And in here we write some code to see is a push event startup notification, does it have a value? And if it's not null, if the startup notification, and, and if the startup notification uh, Apple push service alert is not null, then we're going to pull up the APS alert and put it into our memo lines. So let's take a look at this in action. We'll run our application. And then we'll bring up our backend push example. And with the application running, we'll say this is test one. And we get the push event received. Let's go and minimize our iOS application. And let's change this to a two, push it. Here comes the alert click on it, and there the second alert message is put into our application. Now let's go and close the application. So we'll send a push notification, there it is. We'll click on it, and up comes, this is test three, there's the message that came from the alert. And those are the three states. When your application is running and you get a notice, it shows up. If your application is running in the background, you get a push notification, uh, it comes to the front. And if your app isn't running and you get a push notification, your application starts and you get the notification that was set for it.